colis fracture. Named after Abraham Colis, who first described it, colis fracture is a common occurrence, particularly in postmenopausal women. It typically presents in individuals above 40 years of age who have a history of falling onto an outstretched hand. Fracture Characteristics Fracture Location and Type The fracture line lies at the cortical cancellous junction. It's a transverse fracture of the distal radius, often associated with dorsal subluxation of the distal fragment. Displacement Several displacements can occur with a colis fracture, such as lateral tilt, lateral displacement, dorsal tilt, and supination. Related Injuries Colis fracture often coincides with other injuries. For instance, ulnar styloid fracture. This is a common associated injury. Ligament and cartilage damage. There can be rupture of ulnar collateral ligaments in the triangle cartilage of the ulna. Damage to the interosseous ligament can result in a radial ulnar dislocation. Clinical features. History. Patient's history is crucial in diagnosing colis fracture. A typical account involves a fall onto an outstretched hand. Dinner fork deformity. One of the classic signs of colis fracture is the so-called dinner fork or bayonet deformity. This is due to the backward, dorsal, and outward radial displacement of the wrist and hand. Displacement of radial styloid. In a colis fracture, the radial styloid is displaced to the level of the ulnar styloid, which can often be palpated or seen on examination. Wrist changes. There is noticeable prominence of the wrist on the backside and a depression in the front. Common fracture symptoms. As with any fracture, swelling, pain, tenderness, and restriction of movement are also present in colis fracture. Diagnosis. The diagnosis of a colis fracture is primarily clinical, but radiographic confirmation is essential to assess the extent of the fracture and any associated displacement. Clinical examination. Classic physical findings like dinner fork deformity, along with pain, swelling, and restricted movement, point towards a colis fracture. X-ray imaging. X-ray imaging is the mainstay in diagnosing a colis fracture. The dorsal tilt seen in this fracture helps differentiate it from other distal radial fractures. Treatment The treatment for colis fracture varies depending on whether the fracture is displaced or not. Undisplaced fracture If the x-ray confirms that the fracture is not displaced, the treatment is usually conservative. The patient's forearm is immobilized in a below elbow cast for a period of four to six weeks. Displaced fracture. If the fracture is displaced, treatment usually involves closed reduction under anesthesia. After the reduction, the patient's wrist is immobilized in a cast in a position of palm reflection and ulnar deviation. Follow-up x-rays are done weekly for the first month to ensure the fracture is healing appropriately and to rule out any malalignment. In cases of severe comminution, K-wire fixation or the use of advanced locking compression plates might be required. Complications Stiffness This is a common complication resulting from a lack of active hand movements during the period when the forearm is casted. Physiotherapy is often beneficial in addressing this issue. Malunion Malunion is often seen in colis fractures. It occurs when the fracture redisplaces within the cast. Intervention is needed only when the malunion interferes with daily activities. Shortening of radius. This results from subluxation of the inferior radio ulnar joint, making the ulna head prominently visible. It leads to severe restriction in ulnar deviation and forearm rotation. A surgical procedure called Darrick's resection is typically the chosen treatment in these cases. Carpal tunnel syndrome. This can be a late complication of a colis fracture. It's caused by the compression of the median nerve due to the formation of callus. Depending on the severity, it can be managed conservatively or may require surgery. Reflex sympathetic dystrophy, also known as pseudex dystrophy, reflex sympathetic dystrophy occurs due to vasomotor instability, causing severe pain, 
redness, swelling, and even osteoporotic changes in the bone. Colis fracture is the most common cause of pseudex dystrophy in the upper limb. It has a prolonged course and is mostly managed with physiotherapy. Tendon rupture. Specifically, rupture of the extensor pollicis longus can occur as a long-term complication of a colis fracture due to ischemic damage to the tendon during the sustained injury. Tendon transfer using the extensor and decess tendon is a usual treatment for this condition. That's all for the video. We'll see you next time.